day grade 12. I'm Tino Sonekas and today we're going to look at the internal resistance as part of the stem and action boost experiment series. The aim of this um, experiment is to determine the um, internal resistance and the EMF of a battery. Real batteries um, is just not the source of potential difference but they also possess this internal resistance. The all material has resistance and as you can see a battery or a cell is also made up of material. There's metal and chemicals inside there um, and will form in, um, resistance. Internal resistance is denoted with a small r. The definition that you need to know is that of load, which is the external res the resistance of the circuit. The voltage across the load is V load and equals to the current in the circuit multiplied by the external resistance of the circuit. Summary from Ohm's law, the potential difference across the internal resistance is the current multiplied by internal resistance, which is the small r. So let's quickly run through all the materials. So what materials do we need for this prac? We need three D cell batteries a cell holder, connecting wires, an ammeter, a voltmeter, and four 10 ohm resistors. So for, our ex for our circuit, the circuit we're going to build, so we're going to use the following diagram as a blueprint to build my circuit. Um, in, the in the diagram you see we have three cells and a battery, so let's insert the three cells quickly. So that's our three cells into the battery holder. And then I'm going to follow conventional current method in building my circuit, starting from the positive terminal of the battery and working my way towards the negative terminal of the battery. From that diagram we see that the next step we need to do is to connect our ammeter in series. So we're going to grab the ammeter wires. Okay, This is the passport current and voltage sensor from PASCO. And it's basically a two and one. So it's got both my ammeter and my voltmeter in there. So these two top wires is part of the ammeter and these two wires there is part of the voltmeter. So for this I need to attach two crocodile clips to my banana clips and the black one to the black. And I'm going to attach the red, which is my positive lead, to my positive terminal of the battery. And I'm going to attach this in series to the first resistor. And attach my first resistor there. And my resistors are all 10 ohms. Then we need, see from the diagram, we need another three resistors. So I'm just going to attach the three resistors quickly. Also in series. Just making sure there's a connection between them. And then from there we see that we're going to need a connecting wire to close the circuit from the last resistor towards the negative terminal of the battery. I'm not going to connect it as yet because I'm going to use this as a switch. Then the next step we need to do is we need to connect the voltmeter in parallel. So I'm going to grab my two voltmeter leads. I'm just going to move it around here to the side and I'm going to just untangle this quickly. I'm going to insert the voltmeter lead into my onto the left over here. And I'm going to take this lead. I'm going to attach a crocodile clip to that and attach it to here. Now you can see that our voltmeter is placed in parallel. Now our circuit is basically complete and only thing we need to do is close it. Okay. For this experiment I'm going to close it, I'm going to record the data, I'm going to open the circuit, I'm going to take out a resistor and close the circuit again, record the data and move through that. So basically looking at um, this, so we're going to start with this diagram, then we're going to have this diagram, next one and that one.
So reducing this, the number of resistors every single time. Okay, just remember, looking at my circuit, that everything outside there is going to be my V-load, and inside this is going to be the internal resistance. Okay, so let's look at my data capturing software over here. Um, I'm going to click Preview, and we will see that our values are stabilizing. Okay, so you get a current of um, 0 0.1 ampere and a voltage of 4.5 volts. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say keep sample because it's something I want to do. Okay, so I want to record that values. Um, I'm going to disconnect my circuit. I'm going to take a resistor out. Connect it up again. Close my circuit. And if you have negative values there, if somewhere in your circuit you made a mistake um, and you just need to swap those wires around. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for that. I see my value stabilized and I'm going to press keep sample again. Then open a circuit, open a circuit, remove another resistor, close it, and close the circuit again, and wait for the data. You see it's nice and stable, and we keep data again, and repeat it for the last time. We open a circuit, remove the little third resistor, so we only left with one resistor. Um, close it, because you can see that's no values over there. Close it. Close it, see the value stabilized, and we're going to press keep sample. And because we're finished with this, I'm going to press stop. So we have all our values. And I'm going to open my circuit. Because the moment we leave the circuit closed, it's going to drain my batteries. So let's look at the data. So you see, with every time we change the results, the, so what's going to be my dependent and independent variables? Okay. What are we changing in this circuit? We are changing current. So we are controlling current. So current is going to be my independent variable, whereas voltage or potential difference is going to be my dependent variable. Okay. So looking at the EMF, EMF is our total potential difference, which is um, V external plus V internal, which is the same as V load plus V internal resistance. Um, v internal resistance, we know from Ohm's law, is going to be I times small r. Remember, um, small r is internal resistance. And we just replace internal resistance with I times small r. Then we make V load the subject of subject of the equation, and we rearrange our formula according to that. Um, make another rearrangement to that, and we end up seeing that that is very similar to a linear or straight line equation, which is y equals m x plus c. And from there we can see that V load is going to be my on the y-axis, or my potential difference is going to be on the y-axis. Um, negative r is going to be my gradient. x is going to be my dependent variable on the x-axis. And emf is going to be the y-intercept of. So from our data, we're going to take this table, and we're going to go and plot our results. Um, current is going to be my independent variable, so that's going to go on the x-axis. And voltage is going to be my dependent variable, which goes on the y-axis. So let's go to graph. Um, data Capstone is already plotting the um, data for me. And you'll see there's my four data points that we collected. Then I want to add a best fit line. Because remember from our equation that we need to find the gradient. Okay, so we need to go and calculate the gradient of these. Uh, so we need to add a best fit line to that. And I'm going to go over here, go look for my um, what is called MX plus C. Okay, and I get my 
best fit line over J. So from here we can see that my gradient is a negative 0, 0,208. So you'll see that my gradient, there's my gradient M, and there's a B, okay? The, um, that B is the same as my plus C. So that's going to be my y-intercept or my EMF. So you can see from here that my EMF of the battery is going to be 4.7 volts. The gradient is a negative, okay? So we were dealing with a negative gradient. If you look at your equation, you'll see there's a negative R over there. So that negative R and the negative 0 0.208 will give us a positive. So my internal resistance is going to become positive. We can see that in total internal resistance for the battery is 2,08 ohms. The aim of this practical was to determine the internal resistance of the battery. Um, from the graph, we can see that the total internal resistance for the battery was 2,08 ohms. And we can take it a little bit further and go and calculate the internal resistance of the cell. We have three cells over here. So basically, we can go and take 2,08. We divide it by three because we have three cells. And we'll see that is, that's going to be 0 0.693 ohms. So that's the internal resistance per cell. The internal resistance is never, never going to be a, a big value. So it's going to be a quite a small value. And grade 12, that brings us to the end of the internal resistance practical.